Hello everyone, I'm Seema and I'm here today to introduce new OSCE for mental health. As we all know that since August last year, the OSCE has changed a little bit. And as we all uh, know that we have been calling it the new, uh, new OSCE, whether it might be the mental health OSCE or it might be the adult OSCE. So there has been a lot of uh, speculation as to what this new OSCE is going to be uh, containing. Although now it has been a few months since it has been going on and uh, we are pretty much um, uh, are now aware that what are the different, different stations. But mental health is still um, something which not many people are aware of. So I will be going and introducing the new OSCE for mental health and what all are the stations, what, how it is different from the last one. And um, uh, hopefully by the end of this presentation, you will have a better idea of how we are going to be preparing, what all is required for you to know about the mental health OSCE. Um, so let us go on. So first of all, a little bit about the OSCE. Now we know that uh, the OSCE is an abbreviation for Objective Structural Clinical Exam. Now this is an exam that tests your practical aspect or practical knowledge towards you gaining a registration or an MC pin to become a registered nurse. You know that you have already appeared for a theory uh, exam and you have already established that you are very good in your theoretical knowledge. But now we have to also establish that our practical knowledge is as sound as the theoretical knowledge. So from August 2021, there has been a change in the OSCE, as I had earlier said. Initially, the OSCE or the legacy OSCE, which we call it now, it used to be of six stations. And the six stations used to be comprising of the skills as well as, as the APIE scenario. But now this has been replaced by you appearing for 10 stations. Now, it does feel as if 10 station is a lot that you will be giving. And of course, it is slightly different and more stations have been added. But this is all to do good because this is now checking or um, it, you are able to now show a more wider aspect of your knowledge and it is only going to increase your confidence. So the OSCE, this is currently only taken in UK and uh, it, it is um, our, uh, uh, now I, I'm happy to announce that earlier there used to be only three uh, universities which were taking the OSCE exam, but now there have been two more um, universities which have been added who are taking the OSCE exam. So the, uh, in total, there are five centers in UK which are conducting the OSCE exam. They are the Northampton University, the Oxford Brook University, which has two, two campus. One is in Oxford and one is in Swindon. Then the Ulster University, which is in Northern Ireland. Then North Umbria University and Leeds University. So now uh, this, this was just the background knowledge, but now when we are going to any of the exam, we always want to know that what is going to be happening in the exam center or what to expect in the test center. So that is more to give us confidence that uh, we are uh, familiar with the surrounding. So um, just to give you an idea, normally this uh, the practical exam uh, is taken in um, like there is going to be a lot of assessors. There is going to be people. There is um, you will be given the scenarios, but and all those things are going to happen. But there is like the patient base. I'm sure that all of you would have at some point been in a &E and you see that the a &E is divided into different, different base. So the exam is also con uh, conducted in similar base. So you, each individual station, you will be having a bay. There is an examiner who will be seeing uh, or who will be overseeing and will be, um, uh, and there, there is going to be an assessor as well. You can uh, familiarize yourself with the equipments that you will be using before the exam. And also the exam is going to be recorded for moderation and review purposes. And sometime it is possible that you might be required to wear a PPE in the exam. That is just to keep up with the COVID um, guidelines, but your examiner or the assessor is going to be able to guide you with this one, that if you require to wear a PPE. 
Now, this is what a typical uh, setup is going to look like. As you can see that there is a patient bay. Um, there is going to be a bed on which there, there is going to be a mannequin. Um, there is an area for your hand hygiene. There is a table and a chair where if you need to write anything, you can sit and write over there. And there is going to be a place for the assessor to, uh, to be sitting and assessing you as well. There is a timer where because all of the stations are timed station. So there is a timer that is clearly visible and you should be able to see that how much time is um, left for you to finish your station. That is another uh, one of the typical uh, station. So you can see that everything is very clearly visible and the surrounding is no different than how you are used to in your day-to-day -day practice as well. And about the equipment, then all of the equipment will be provided, even the stationery will be provided, and they are all the standard and commonly used equipments. And you are going to be given some time to get familiar with the equipment in the orientation bay as well. But some of the common equipments are, as you can see, that there is an oxygen uh, uh, line, there is a call bell, there is um, settings for the bed or the control for the bed, the BNF, which is uh, just to, uh, in case if you require any help with the medication. And you can see the mannequins with the wound um, and the other procedures, some of the procedures that other people uh, have been doing and what you can expect to be doing in the exam. Now about the mental health OSCE. So we are going to be now getting a little bit more specific about the mental health OSCE exam. So this exam normally is going to take around uh, four hours to complete. It is comprising of 10 station, as I had already mentioned. Out of the 10 station, there are four stations which are for APIE. And we all know that A stands for assessment, P is planning, I is for implementation, and E is for evaluation. Then there are going to be two pairs of uh, skills in which or a total four skills that you will be doing. There is then going to be two silent stations, one for professional values and one for evidence-based station. Now, these are two new stations which have been introduced since August 2021. <clears throat> this always um, will make sure or these stations are to check that your professional values are sound and that you understand the importance of professional values in your day-to-day -day practice. And also you need to uh, understand and have a, have a good grip on how to um, assess an evidence and how to make your practice as an evidence-based practice. You are also going to have your original documents checked on the same day. And by original documents, I mean that all of the documents that you have submitted while doing your registration uh, process on the um, NMC website. So after the exam, the results can uh, take up to five working days for it to come. And once the results come and you, are, you have cleared the exam, then you will be given your PIN number, but that can take up to 30 days for you to get the PIN number. So now getting into a little bit more detail about the APIE. So I have already said that APIE is assessment, planning, implementation, and evaluation. Now each station is going to have different time. You are not going to get any extra time to read the scenario question. Whatever time is specified will also include the reading time as well. APIE is always going to be in the same sequence. So you are always going to get the assessment, which is going to be followed by planning, implementation, and evaluation. And it is the same patient's journey that you are going to be carrying on. So the patient for whom you did assessment, it is going to be the same patient for whom you would be writing the care plan, and you are going to be doing the implementation, and then you are going to be doing an evaluation or a handover for the same patient. Planning is a silent station, and you will need to write one care plan with two problems in that. Majority of the time, um, you will be getting uh, an actor who will be playing as a patient in the assessment and the implementation. So for the assessment, you will be getting 20 minutes to complete the station. 
you will be given a brief history on an A4 sheet and you will then need to collect, organize and document information about the patient and you will require to take the history of the patient and do an assessment based on the recovery model of care. So when you are going to be taking the history over here, you will require to take a mental health history and also a PHQ-9 or a patient health questionnaire is also going to be included in this. And you will need to discuss your findings of the PHQ-9, the score of the PHQ-9 with the patient and also going to be discussing that what is the plan, that what are you going to be doing considering what the score of the PHQ-9 is. And as I said, that there is going to be an actor in this station. So with this station, it is going to be required or this station is going to be checking that how good you are with the assessment of the mental uh, health and also that how uh, you are uh, making sure that the patient is comfortable, that you will require to use a solar method as well in which you are making sure that you are giving um, confidence to the patient, you are making rapport with the patient, you are giving comfort to the patient, and as well as making sure that you are working in a safe environment. Once you have completed your assessment, you will be required to do the closure of the station adequately giving uh, with making sure that you have documented and you have uh, give, safety netted and given the patient call bell that in case if they require any help. So this is just an example of a patient health care uh, questionnaire uh, or a PHQ-9 questionnaire. As you can see, that this is a form that is going to be completed in which there are nine questions and these nine questions are going to be asking um, various things which are going to be related with your mental state. This typically patient have to think about it and give the answers in such a way that how you have been feeling over the last two weeks. So this is going to do a mental health assessment over the last two weeks. At the end, you have to total uh, all of the, um, the, the numbers that you, the patient has highlighted. And uh, once you have uh, got a total, then you have to see that what does that total comes up to. There is normally a key attached to this as well, which is going to give you an idea that if uh, what, uh, according to your total, what should be your provisional diagnosis and what are going to be the guidelines or recommended treatment for that. Planning. For planning, we have already considered that it is um, a silent station and it is the time that you are going to be getting is 14 minutes for this. You will need to write one care plan with the two relevant problem considering the aspect of care related to the scenario from the assessment. You are going to be using a black pen to complete this station. Make sure that the problems are not similar and the problems are relevant to the assessment that you have done. Make sure your writing is clear and legible and that you complete all aspects of the care plan. Please try and avoid overwriting or rewriting. But in case if you happen to, then please cross it with a single line and initial on top of it. So you should also make sure that you sign and date your care plan because it is very important that for the assessors to know that whose care plan is that. Also, just make sure that you have divided your time adequately between the two problems because you don't want to write one problem as very well and the other problem you run out of time. So please make sure that you have divided your time adequately. Implementation. Now, this station is going to test the, uh, the, your uh, capability uh, of administering the medication safely to the patient. You will be given 15 minutes for this station. There is going to be an actor who will be playing as a patient. Now, you will need to check all of the medication as per the medication chart and dispense the due medication. And if there is any medication that is due and you are not able to dispense it, you will need to code them adequately. You will need to make sure that you sign all of the medication that you have given. It will be very important for you to be organized and thorough in this station. Make sure that you have checked all of the hours of the medication. And by hours, I mean that you will need to check that it is the right medication, right dose, right route, right documentation, and right patient. 
the knowledge of the medication is very very important for obvious reasons so please make sure that you get yourself familiar with all of the medication which are used in a typical mental health setting evaluation now this station is going to require you to give a verbal handover of the patient using an s bar technique now the s bar technique is a technique which uses s for situation b for background a for assessment and r is for your recommendation you will be given 8 minutes for this station now there is not going to be a patient uh, on this station and you will be required to make notes and you will be given uh, a sheet that where you can make notes uh, for uh, for 5 minutes and then you will need to give a verbal handover to the assessor the notes that you have prepared will not be marked it is you will be marked only on the verbal handover that you have given but it you will be required to give your verbal handover in by using the s bar technique again being planned and organized is going to be important so that you can follow the s bar technique and you can give a good handover now coming to skills so there are in total there are six skills out of which you will get two pairs of two skills to demonstrate in the exam now the time duration for all of the skills is 8 minutes per skill the skills they can be either before api or um after the api as we have said api is always going to be together so the skills can be before after uh, or after the api all of the skills will be done on the mannequins now the six skills which i have just said they are the admission of support uh, administration of suppository and it's the rectal suppository that we are talking about then the de escalation nutritional assessment in which you will require to calculate a must score and discuss the finding with your recommendations then physiological observation in which you will need to take the vital signs of the patient and complete a news chart reminiscence where you will be required to be using various props to jog up the memory of the patient and talking therapies so you will have to discuss the benefits of the talking therapies various type of talking therapies and a talking therapy that you will be using on um, on the patient for patient's condition now this is what a physiological uh, ch uh, assessment chart or the news chart is going to look like so over here you can see that you will need to complete an a to e assessment of the patient and uh, while uh, doing this assessment you will need to record the respiratory rate the uh, the pulse rate the temperature blood pressure capillary refill oxygen saturations and various other things about the patient and you will need to complete this chart and in the end you will need to come up to a score according to the score you will need to decide the monitoring frequency and whether you are going to be escalating the care or not and last but not the least you are going to be completing it with your signature this is the chart that we used for the nutritional assessment or the must chart which is the malnourishment universal screening tool in this station you will be required to calculate the bmi of the patient and as per the bmi you will need to score the bmi in the step 2 you will be required to see the percentage of weight loss and record it on the must chart and also you will have to think about the acute disease effect and whether it is relevant uh, or not once you have done all these three steps you will need to calculate the total must score and decide what is the risk of the patient of being malnourished and then as per the risk you will need to give your recommendations you will need to also date time and put your signature to complete the must assessment chart now these these were the skills apart from the skills as i said that there are two new silent stations that have been added one is for professional values this is you will get 10 minutes to complete this station there are five topics out of which you can get any one topic you will be given a scenario which will have a common ethical and integrity dilemmas they can be things like confidentiality drug abuse drug errors etc you will also be required to document your observation 
and please document them in bullet points so it is easier for the examiners um, to assess and your writing should be clear and legible. Try not to rewrite or cross. If you are doing that, then please make sure it is a simple line across the word and that you initial on top of it. The evidence-based practice, again, you are going to get 10 minutes to complete the station. There are five topics out of which you will get any one topic. You will be given an abstract or a conclusion of a research paper, and you will need to draw conclusion and justify the evidence. There are five sets of topics that uh, you can and the research can come from. And you will be again required to use write your observation in the bullet points and your writing should be clear and legible. Now coming to the common mistakes and error people make. So lack of communication, whether it is verbal or non-verbal, not reading or understanding the scenario or instruction, Time management is one of the problems which or the, the issues which comes up. Hand hygiene and infection control. So we always need to make sure that we are safe and we are uh, keeping the patient safe as well. Not checking for common things like allergies or patient identity. It is very, very important to make sure that you do so. Also, it is very important to take consent from the patient and show a caring attitude. An incorrect or an incomplete documentation is also one of the common errors which people make. So please make sure that you have checked your documentation uh, to make sure they are complete and that you have signed wherever you require to be signed. Now, just a little bit, look through the OSCE results. So you will need to pass all of the station for a, uh, for a pass. Um, so that's a no brainer. Sometime, unfortunately, if you're not able to pass any of the stations, so then uh, you will not have passed the exam and hence result in a fail. So a fail up to one to seven stations, you will require to reset at the 50% cost. If you fail more than seven stations, so that eight or 10 station, then it is going to be considered as um, a reset with a 100% cost and you will need to pay a full uh, cost of the OSCE exam. And um, uh, you will get three attempts to make sure that you pass this OSCE exam. Now, when you are going for a reset, please be clear that you are only going to require to reset the stations which you have failed. So if you have failed in one station, then it is the same station that you will require to reset, not the entire OSCE. Also, you are going to get the same scenario that you got when you failed. So please uh, make sure that you prepare yourself very well for that particular station when you are going to go for your reset exam, if required. But let's hope that all of you are going to clear in the first attempt and do not require a reset. General tips. Uh, it is always easier said than done, but try and be calm. Practice, practice, and more practice. Read the scenario and the instructions properly. Time management is very important, so you need to make sure that you finish the exam on time. And please check all of your documentation. If you have made any mistake, then please verbalize it. Say if you have missed out anything, and also say what you are going to be doing to correct that mistake. The examiners will give it a consideration if you are going to do that. Then self-care is also very important. So please make sure that you have rested very well before the exam and that you have had something to eat and drink and are fully hydrated. You will require all of the energy. So please make sure that you eat. Look presentable and avoid anything which can be a cause of infection. Now, this is just as a general sort of thing which I would like all of you to understand and uh, try and practice. We call it as introductory six. Now, this is just a guideline or an advice that how you can make sure that you use these six steps when you are entering the room and making sure that you do not miss out the important things such as patient ID, your ID check, checking for allergies and gaining consent. This also outlines the seven step of hand hygiene, which are again, very important that you follow them. And this is just to say good luck and thank you for listening. 
And we, I would really, really want all of you to pass this exam and be as happy as the nurses that you see in the picture. So good luck, everyone. And I hope you have enjoyed this introduction and you have got a better understanding of the mental health OSTI. So please um, be, stay tuned to our YouTube channel. And um, we have um, our OSCE portal. Please go on our website, which is uh, www.rvrathhealthcare.co.uk. And our YouTube channel is by the name of Charcos Learning Center. And uh, please subscribe our, ch our channel. Very soon, we will be putting up lots of videos of the mental health OSCE as well. Already, there are lots and lots of videos which we have put up for the adult nursing. But now we are coming up with the mental health nursing. Please do contact us if you require any uh, help or any um, uh, uh, for the training or booking of the exam. Please do contact us. The number is going to be um, is running like uh, at the bottom of the screen. All the contact details are running at the bottom of the screen. So please, please um, uh, go on our website and also we'll be looking forward for you to contacting us for the um, training of the uh, mental health OSCE. We can help you with the booking of the exams and other logistics as well. So good luck again and thank you very much for watching this and uh, uh, hope all the best and uh, enjoy your day. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye then.